today we're going to a mushroom restaurant. I know, a mushroom restaurant in Italy. A restaurant called Samia in a town called Badalucia. How do you say it? Badaluco. Badaluco. Town called Badaluco. It was a coastal town that they forgot to shut down, Badaluco. <laughs> Badaluco is 76 kilometers from Nice. It's inland from a town called Arma di Taggia. So whilst myself and Mr. Boo are obviously very experienced cyclists, on this day we were joined by our friend Sister George on a bike which wasn't his own, so we decided that we'd take the train. As Jimmy Savile used to say, let the train take the strain. Why not do what I do? Take the train. Our plan was to take the train from villefranche sur mer into Italy into a town called Vontimil, where we'd have a brief stop for breakfast before joining another train which would take us along the coast to Bordighera. In Bordighera, we'd join the world-famous Ligarian cycle path, cycling through some very interesting tunnels, all the way to a town called Arma di Taggia. From there, we'd follow the Argentine River Valley right the way up to Badaluco and our mushroom restaurant. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the journey to Vontemille took just 50 minutes, which gave us ample time for breakfast and to check out the fantastic food market. it was time to join Tren Italia and take the train to Bordighera where we joined the Ligurian cycle path which is where things started to go a bit pear-shaped. <laughs> to begin with all went well. We even managed to navigate the notorious Italian traffic and find our way to the beginning of the cycle path at Ospedaletti, where we began our blissfully traffic-free 24-kilometer ride along what is actually the old railway line. But then we came to one of the very long tunnels and I decided it would be a good idea to do some filming with my 360-degree camera. <music> Having got the footage I wanted, I decided to stop my bike and turn off the camera. Unfortunately, Mr. Boo, who was behind me, chose this moment to look at his Apple Watch. And this was the result. Of course, Mr. Boo denied any responsibility and said it was entirely my fault because I stopped suddenly. But the evidence is clear. He was distracted by his watch. But luckily I'm a very brave soldier and after practically throwing up on the other side of the tunnel, we carried on our journey to the mushroom restaurant. Once you get to Arma di Taggia, unfortunately you have to leave the cycle path and cycle up a rather unlovely bit of road towards the Argentine Valley. But once you get past this flyover, things improve considerably and the landscape is simply stunning. I 
was beginning to think we'd passed the mushroom restaurant when suddenly, up ahead of me, like a vision, appeared a giant fiberglass mushroom. Amazingly, and in spite of all our adventures, we'd arrived half an hour early for lunch and the mushroom staff weren't quite ready for us, so we decided we'd go up into the village of Badaluco and check it out. Badaluco is in the heart of Italian olive oil territory, but it wasn't the olive presses that caught our eye. We were intrigued by the signage that was above everyone's door. Did a pole dancer live here? Was this Freddy the Forklift truck driver's house? And could this be the abode of the Badaluco darts champion? This here is the home of the Italian Jim Bowen. Jim Bowen. But a quick bit of Googling revealed that far from being accidental, these were actually artworks, and that Badaluco is an open-air art museum. Who knew? Badaluco is also a wonderfully authentic Italian village where the kids still swim in the Argentine River in summer, where you can get a glass of Prosecco in the local wine bar for four euros, and a good-sized two-bedroom flat with a carve for 70 grand. Anyway, our tour of Badaluco complete, it was time to cycle back down the hill for our magic mushrooms. Ristorante Samea is like dining in someone's front room. Except that front room used to be an old olive press. There isn't a menu at Samea. You just sit down and get what you're given. And boy, are you given. First off, a bottle of red wine arrives along with some bread and some cheese sticks. Nothing unusual there, and it gave us time for Christopher to observe the fact that uh, the restaurant's ex-proprietor bears an uncanny resemblance to Stephen Sondheim. Uh, welcome to Fungi in the Park with George. You can tell he works in the entertainment industry, can't you? Luckily, memories of that joke were quickly taken away with the arrival of the first course, bruschetta. <laughs> That was quickly followed up by the arrival of course two, Mushroom Tatar, which was porcini mushrooms, parmesan cheese and raw minced beef. Wow. That is lovely. Course three was mashed potato salad and mushroom. Course four was mushroom omelette. Course five was mushroom dauphinois. Course six, mushroom tagliatelle. Course seven was mushroom risotto. Course eight was lamb chops along with garlic mushrooms and deep-fried mushrooms. There's a theme developing here, have you spotted it yet? For course 10, I chose fruit of the forest gelato and Mr. Boo had a tiramisu that looked a little like a big poo, but he said it was absolutely delicious. We were then given a good coffee, which Mr. Boo decided to make look like a mushroom. And then handed a bottle of mushroom digestive and told to get stuck in. Which prompted us to do some really bad mushroom jokes. The trouble is that now I've eaten 13 courses, I don't have a mushroom for anything else. <laughs> when the bill comes, Chris says, I'm going to be really porchy. <laughs> I really am a fun guy though, aren't I? I've no idea why my career in the British theatre ground to a halt. 
Once we'd settled the bill, which was an unbelievable 40 euros per person, it was time to cycle back down towards Amaditadja. And that would have been where this story ended. Except something really sad has happened. Because whilst I was editing this film, Storm Alex struck France and Italy. And I'm afraid it struck restaurant Samia really badly. These were the pictures taken the day after the Argentine river burst its banks and washed away large parts of the restaurant, including the magic mushroom. But I've little doubt that Samea will be back, bigger and better, and when it is, you should beat a path to its door. It's a wonderfully eccentric restaurant and you will have such a great time dining there. As long as you like mushrooms. Thank you.